hello guys hello people welcome back to my youtube channel my people will not carry on that news come from nigeria today what did they happen for our country sometimes me only understand the one way they baffle me for inside they say if somebody they sick they carry and go to nigeria hospital i don't understand the way they behave once you just carry person come hospital for nigeria they could just begin to do anyhow they know valley woman life you go to find doctor you know go see him if his doctor call you know go they serious he knows come they go say now that one they go say now the other person go put the thing they go say now this they could just they look like say no be woman be the carry come i don't know why hospital for nigeria be like this is it because our government know they give them enough equipment or i don't know why did they behave like that for nigeria hospital why did they do that thing our Nigeria hospital, nothing to it just it's just right off. I'm telling you people, it just stay right off. If you get different, different story with the apple for Nigeria hospital, if you never get experience with Nigeria hospital, if somebody talk them, you not go understand. But if you don't go to Nigeria hospital once, you see what did they happen, you don't get experience. When somebody they talk, you go understand what the person they talk. It is very sad, eh? The way they take their own I, I don't know. They are on carelessness. They let this girl. They lose this girl just like that. This young girl will just they come life. They cannot go to hospital. See the way they take carelessness. Just lose this girl like that. Just let this girl just go. Just let this girl just waste like that. Anyway, my correct, correct people. I don't go waste on time too much. I want me to go straight, go watch this video by myself. But if not the first time where they come across my video be this, or you they watch my video before you never subscribe, I bet follow me, hit that button when it says subscribe. If you don't get any experience with a Nigeria or speed to matter, and you see, see you get any comment, we won't be for the comment section. I beg my darling and amazing people make one no fake to put in a comment for the comment section the way nigeria hospital today they behave anything you think or you don't get experience we know so you won't contribute for this matter may you leave one for the comment below because i don't understand where they be their behavior for nigeria hospital they very bad experience they put the game for nigeria hospital you know the good at all you know the good i go live when i make one watch this video i go see that again for my next video guys bye <laughs>
um, they have to stabilize her till tomorrow so that they can carry out different kind of tests on her. When they gave her the last injection, she was not really active anymore, but her breathing even became worse. I became really scared and I started to disturb those nurses again. So the nurse said that maybe I should try seeing the doctor myself. So I tried to get the doctor and everything. Now, the doctor did not come alone when he came. He came with another doctor. The second doctor was a female doctor. She asked that Amalara should be placed on oxygen. Then the nurses started pushing it to each other. Oh, who is going to get the oxygen? Like that. The, no, their numbers reduced. And I think it was just me and one nurse left with Amalara. So I asked her, OK, where is the oxygen? Said, oh, she's not the one that is supposed to get the oxygen. Where is Toyib? Oh, why didn't they start pushing them? Why didn't they even put Omolara in the ward downstairs? I tried to look around. I saw emergency room. I saw the label. Then I walked inside. So I think the way I walked inside, they raised the alarm. And then one nurse came to meet me. They said, what am I looking for in the emergency room? I said, I'm looking for the oxygen. I don't even know what it looks like. Then she showed me. She said, who wants to use it? I said, it's my friend. She's in the ward. When they brought the oxygen, they put in her nose and they tried to check her BP and everything. I think they figured out that her condition was even getting worse by, as time was going by. So they said that they were going to refer. As at 1.30, 1, 1 in the midnight, they, called, they asked me to get help, that they have to refer her. So I asked, oh, what of your ambulance if you want to refer her? They said, oh, their car is not available, the driver is not around. Initially, they had given us the impression that we we're going to go with the oxygen. Because I remember lamenting that if this thing had happened in the daytime, I probably would have gotten help through um, taxify or boats. So while I sat, I and a neighbor that was driving called for help that, okay, so what's left? Who is following us? Then one of the nurses dashed into the world. She went to get the oxygen tank. She came back. Why she came back? The um, driver, that's a neighbor, asked that. She comes inside. Why she, fi like she fixes the oxygen in her nose Since we're all going together. And she come inside and close the door. So we'll be on our way. Why that one is in process? Then she said, ah, she's not following us. So then we asked her, ah. so who is following us? Everybody started to step aside, started to push it among themselves. After about 10 seconds, they removed the oxygen from her nose in the car. So that means it was basically just like a kind of top up for her. And they said that we should move with the highest speed. Fast forward to 3.30 to 4, we got to last suit and then they announced her dead. So they said that we should go and fill a form that the form says brought in death, that's BID form. So I just imagine that that means that she had died on my laps and that means that she probably even died before we even got there and we didn't notice. For the fact that she, she was with me just a few days, as a matter of fact she ordered perfume for me and the day I heard about her prep passing, I still messaged her to accuse her of you know, the late delivery for the perfume only for the messages. The messages didn't drop. Then I reached out to a mutual friend who said, oh, she lost somebody. I said, who? She said, Omolara. I was like, I just texted Omolara. So you can imagine the pain, the agony I've been through. It's, it's been really crazy. Let him to the hospital. Apparently, the MD didn't even know Omolara had passed. Because it was when we got there that they brought the report that they told her, I mean, they told him that Omolara's people are here. They now quickly brought the report to him and then they invited us over to his office. When we got to the office, he brought out his laptop trying to explain uh, uh, he wasn't present the day she came on, the th Thursday that she came. That's to tell you how these guys don't even care about anybody's life. And then he acknowledged the fact that they didn't do well. He said it, that I'm sorry he was apologizing to us. I said, what will apology do? Apology cannot bring this girl back to life. I said, okay, give me your card. So I took his call card and I left. Omolara died six days to her birthday, to her 29th birthday. 
Mara was an orphan. She had no father. She had no mother. She was somebody that was very strong. She was a motivation to a lot of people. She had two businesses aside from her workplace at La Sema, aside from where she works at La Sema. She was not paid three months prior to her death, so she was only living on those businesses. She used to sell perfume and she used to produce plantain chips just for sale, like for people that are close to her, like around. That's what she did to just fend for herself. And the little that she raised from that, she was still generous to people. So we did candle night, you know, invited one or two pastors. And then we did like a protest, just a peaceful protest. First of all, when they saw us coming, they locked the gate. The security quickly locked the gate. That's to show you that they, they actually know what they are doing. We were there for 30, 40 minutes. They did not show up to come and talk to us. We need people to come out and ask questions. The people that have been reaching out, is they just reach out. We don't see anything. It's only my lawyer that is trying to make efforts. And in an unjust society, silence is a crime. Because it could happen to anybody. If you are saying it's not my business, it could just happen to your child. At the end of the day, we just want justice. Uh, we know whatever it is we're doing now cannot bring back Omolara. But obviously it will stop, you know, it will help you know, any other person in Nigeria from being killed due to negligence. According to them, if you look at what the girl wrote, she said 10 o'clock she went to her room and she was there. So she came back. Then she was having difficulty in breathing. So they have to admit her, I mean, admit her start a nebulize. Nebulize is what we do for people who have also find it difficult. They nebulize. So all these were given and they nebulize and put on oxygen. The difficulty in breathing persisted. Which I can tell you, Osa will not give. Now, she was on oxygen. The only cylinder that we have left was used for her. But because they know that we don't have a backup again, and when they called me, I said, look, we can't keep that kind of patient in the hospital. That patient is better managed in government hospital. Please refer. So I want to ask you, yeah. at the point, the lady, the lady that I um, yeah that was with her said that there was nobody to help uh, with the oxygen that well there were allegations of negligence mm -hmm. on the part of the nurses okay you see this is one of the challenges we have once there are issues people look for your faults mm -hmm. does he know where to keep oxygen does he know because i read that she says he was not looking for oxygen does he know where to keep oxygen if she had said there is no oxygen in the hospital now, yeah. that would have been a different thing. Somebody who is having difficult to breathe, you don't, I mean, you don't need the relation to tell you that person, this person is having difficulty to breathe yeah. before a doctor does what she needs to do. But you know, once people are always emotional, once there are issues, they try to look for who to blame. And that is just it. Now, she has to be referred we cannot get across to our ambulance driver. They made every effort. I called his number two. His number was not going because he stays at Ibafo. I don't even know yeah. his, his, his house. So they two, I mean, that girl too was making calls before they got the person that conveyed her. Of course, the Osini got exhausted. And that was why she could not go with any oxygen. So unfortunately, she uh, gave up the ghost before getting to uh, last week. I just hope they will do autopsy yeah. so that, I mean, yeah, no. because the, the thinking now is as if, oh, is the other drug that was given that caused her demise. Or I negligence mean, of the hospital. Uh, negligence of the hospital. I mean, what do we give that cause, if somebody has an ulcer and you don't even treat it well, the worst is the pain persists. I mean, not leading to somebody just dying. Also, doesn't cause that.